Welcome, Weary Wanderer. I'm Dave Makes Noises, and today we're asking the internet, who is the most evil character you've played in D&D, and did you enjoy playing as this character? Part 3. Back in the days of 3.5 Pathfinder, I played a wonderfully fun and perhaps slightly evil character I liked to call Whisper. She was a Kender Rogue, Assassin Prestige class. I am sure many of you are cringing just based on her race, but unlike most Kenders, she wasn't all that fond of handling. The campaign also took place in the DM's custom world, so some things were different than official settings, and way more magical and powerful than was the norm. I started playing her as third level, long before it was possible to prestige, so she began as a simple enough rogue, a rogue designed more to be a spy type instead of the typical thief. On one of her very first adventures, she found this really cool medallion on her slain foe. It was pretty and unique, so she put it on. It felt weird. Not bad, not good, just odd. After the sensation settled, she noticed the dead music man wasn't a man at all, but a half dragon. She was able to deduce that the medallion was basically a superpowered disguised self at will contraption. Score. And she also saw something very shiny that appealed to that kender nature, and so of course, she took it. The half-dragon dead thing didn't need his eyeballs anymore anyway. That became quite the tradition with her. She took the eyeballs of enemies they killed. This desecration did serve to run off the lawful good paladin who just couldn't cope. Over time, she did expand upon her collection of body parts, not only eyeballs, but claws, horns, tails, etc., were kept in the magic bag the DM let me find that kept everything preserved perfectly well. At one point, unbeknownst to the rest of her party, she was hired to keep a certain Minotaur and his half-sister away from each other. As I recall, that particular Minotaur had hired our group to help find his half-sister and escort her back home. A bit of a quandary, and at first glance it would seem not possible to do both, but good little Whisper found a way. While traversing through the woods, she made some excuse to separate the rest of her party from the Minotaur guy, whom she followed, sneakily. Once her party was well enough away from the Minotaur, she snuck up behind him and sporked him in the rump. Yes, spork. Her weapon of choice was the Spork of Doom, a simple enough instrument based off dagger specs, but with a few enhancements. The little prickly tines had been sharpened, keen edge, so it crit at a 19 or 20. It had both acid and electric damage, and thanks to my roguiness, I had sneak attack. I ended up rolling a crit when the attack happened and did enough damage that it put him into system shock, at which point it was easy enough to finish the job of killing him. His head went into her collection. The party never realized what happened to him. We found the half-sister and finished the escort service. Whisper got paid for keeping them apart after a bit of explaining that she had kept them apart, just not as intended. Then suddenly, there was a whole battalion of minotaurs looking for Whisper. Turns out this minotaur guy was their prince. Oopsies. Well, Whisper didn't really like the idea of all these big creatures trying to track her down, so she planned a dinner party. Remember that medallion? Well, this was the first time she'd really gotten to use it. Aside for random funsies along the way, she used it to make a great disguise, something a little flashy, memorable, not like herself. She went shopping, bought some paralytic and some hallucinogenic drugs, Tons of wine, beer, and mead, various forms of meat and veggies, including large quantities of beef, hired some bards and entertainers, and invited the entire army of minotaurs to a feast. Liquor flowed freely. Of course, it was laced with the drugs. Food was plentiful as well, though everything contained more beef than a group of semi-bovine creatures would like. She waited for things to get crazy and began to random poke people, darting away so that another would get the blame. At the end, she laughed and told them to stop looking for her before dancing away. DM rolled a ton of dice. Two-thirds of the Minotaurs died that night, either from inflicted wounds, most of which they did to each other, or poisoning from the food and drink. Nearly all of the remainder would die shortly, within a week or two at most, from the effects of digesting beef, mad cow disease, or other complications. In that one night, Little Whisper went from level 8 to level 17, the rest of the party knew what was going on at player level, but chose to sit it out so there was no one to share the XP with. <laughs> In our group of friends, it is still advised to avoid attending any dinner parties. I miss Whisper. Her daughter, Echo, was fun and evil as well, but less memorable since it was an evil campaign, so she didn't stick out so much. 
I've been playing a character in my friend's campaign that died in the last session we played that was delightfully evil and was very fun to play. I present Dr. Zorander Polidori Lestat, chaotic neutral arcane distiller alchemist. He was a mad scientist from Germanic-like tributary kingdom that is controlled by a dragonborn empire that is culturally similar to China. He was forced to leave his home city and flee to the new colonies because he basically created Frankenstein's monster, who was one of the other players in the group, and one of the body parts belonged to a powerful noble. His deeds, evil or otherwise, that he did on the island were as follows. In his backstory, he was a mad scientist that made a Frankenstein-like monster that was another player, as previously mentioned, and did other things, much worse, like dissecting cats. He threw the captain of the boat the party was traveling on and another player overboard as part of a distraction the party was hired to do by a fellow passenger named Knitknot, which awakened a sea monster that attacked the boat. He spent most of that sea monster fight in the captain's cabin, poisoning a bottle of scotch and stealing the deed to the boat before being forced to fight when the monster broke into the room. He poisoned the captain and the first mate by having them drink a celebratory glass of scotch from the captain's cabin. This killed the captain, and the first mate would have died had the not-so-good doctor not intervened since the first mate was the girlfriend of Knitnot. He tried to pit Knitnot and the navigator of the ship against each other by planting the idea in the other's head that the other poisoned the captain. While the party fought jellyfish monsters on the island docks, he spent the entire fight buying and eating some bagels and locks from a nearby vendor. Two players almost died in this fight. The bagels and locks tasted really good, though. I hope there were capers, and I hope the bagels were toasted. He harvested the body of a colonial nobleman's son to bolster the party's rations and proceeded to eat the body later when lost in the woods. He tested out a potentially poisonous concoction by putting a drop of it in the mouth of a petrified servant. He let a fellow player, the same one that was thrown overboard, die from a displacer beast. This one is more questionable since the player basically had already killed himself and I just made no efforts to save him for a number of reasons and then proceeded to seduce and make sweet love to that displacer beast. He then dropped a post-coital cigarette butt in the mouth of this dead player, and later when the party found the body again, he poured acid on the face of the body. He later met a drugged out hippie, for lack of a better description, played by the same person whose character I'd let die and accidentally killed him when, during a fight, my character had placed a healing potion inside the mouth of the creature we were fighting, that had almost died because my character in his mutated state wanted the glory and thrill of killing it himself. The other player tried to flee against the advice of other players and was knocked out by an opportunity attack. It was then the last one down by the creature where in one final glorious moment I used my mutated claws to ignite all the grenades on his belt, which killed himself, the beast, and the other player. The DM was in utter shock as he had planned a lot of his campaign based on the fact that he assumed my character wouldn't be the one to get himself killed, so he decided to just scrap the whole thing and started fresh with all of us making new characters. He was tremendously fun to play and playing him also made me realize that a lot of the characters I have played are varying degrees of morally gray assholes, which I'm perfectly okay with since so far I haven't been able to come up with an idea for a purely good character that meshes with me. Plus, it's fun to cause conflict in the party and the overall world you play in, provided that you don't go to an extreme level that ruins other people's fun. I'm fond of evil characters, but my worst has to go to Ralzire. He was a tiefling brawler and worshipper of Zovaron, demon lord of gargoyles and ruins. Originally a human, Ralzire grew up in the slums of the nation's capital and quickly learned that only the strong survive, developing a hatred for civilization Ralzire wanted to burn it all to the ground and let anarchy reign, Tyler Durden style. Tasked by Zovaron to hunt down the descendants of heroes who thwarted him previously, Ralzire executes this task with sadistic joy. It was an evil campaign, but my character was by far the darkest and constantly pushed the other player characters to perform ever more heinous crimes. We were given a mercenary band and I constantly used them as fodder. This slime looks toxic. You, lick the wall. The last four soldiers who touched this artifact mutated horrifically. Let's try Soldier 5. Soon I had the entire party using our army as guinea pigs. Due to dwindling numbers, we were forced to begin recruiting. In one town, I convinced the party to burn down the granaries and use the resulting famine to recruit starving peasants. We were tasked by giants to capture an escaped dragon. Our ambush plan failed spectacularly, but instead of fighting the dragon, I convinced it to attack the giants during the giant equivalent of a bar mitzvah while we ran. 
During our travels, we found a village with a portal to hell sealed beneath the chapel. I convinced my party to kill all the people in the chapel and cut out their hearts to open the portal. They initially refused, saying, we're evil, but not up like you. Eventually, I convinced them that it was the only way to weaken our enemy slash employer, the king, so we all got on with the hacking. We found an alchemical golem and the party mechanic, a crazy gnome alchemist, figured out that she could reverse engineer the golem and make more. After we killed one of my targets, a high priestess and icon of the empire, I convinced the mechanic to make a golem from the priestess's brain and staple her face to the front. I'm sad the campaign ended. He was such a fun character to play. Hello again, and thank you for hanging out to the very end of the video. Always a pleasure to go to dark ass places with you all. We'd love to hear about your most evil character in the comments below. And if you have another story you'd like to maybe get narrated, drop it off at our official subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper, the gathering place for stories just like these to find their way into videos just like this one. If you're thinking to yourself, I want to play D&D and I have nobody to play with, woe is me. You may have some luck over at Mr. Ripper's Group Finder Discord server, a Discord server Rip Daddy and our beloved mod team designed to help you find a group. There's like a lot of people in there and there's new games getting posted all the time. I hope this week that you make time to create something that sparks your curiosity. If you find yourself thinking, wow, this Dave guy seems pretty cool, more of that energy, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitch at Dave Makes Noises. Thank you again for watching. We love you here at Rip Daddy's house. Please sub for Nat 20s. Ring the bell if you like commenting first on stuff, and we hope to see you again sometime soon.